Let's talk a little bit about the application process. I appreciate that it can be quite daunting to get started. The form is really long and we ask for a, a lot of different supporting material. That is really because we are trying to get a sense of each candidate. Um, I want to assure everyone that really we put in the effort and the time to read these files really carefully and to try to understand each candidate on their own terms and to make a fair decision. First, demonstrate that you have a strong interest in European politics and society based on your previous coursework or life experiences. Second is get to know academic faculty or other instructors who know you well and could speak to your potential as a student in our program. Third is read about the DPIR and EPS faculty on our websites to get a sense of what we at Oxford do research in. Research the department so you can explain how your project is going to fit in here. Now, you do not need to contact potential supervisors. Universities vary a bit on this, but you definitely do not need to do that here at DPIR. But it is sensible, I think, to be able to indicate in your application who might be potential supervisors for your project. Now, I say supervisors plural deliberately. There's no guarantee you'll be able to work with a specific person. And so I think it's worth thinking in a broader way about how you'd fit into the academic community of DPIR. Think carefully about why you want to do the course and about what topics interest you and what research you might want to undertake. The application statement is not a research proposal, but providing a clear and well-motivated statement of possible research plans is really helpful and really important, not least in demonstrating your motivation for the course. Your application will be stronger if you can make a clear case for why this program and this department is a good fit for you and your research interests. Applicants without much background in political theory sometimes worry overly about their statements of purpose. In particular, they worry that their research ideas, their thesis plans are not yet fully formed. However, that's perfectly understandable. We do want you to have interests and enthusiasms at this stage, but you're not expected to have a fully fledged research design before you arrive which is why we provide courses on research design as part of the first year of the MPhil. Don't hide information you want us to have, right? The form appears long to you, it is long to us as well. There's a lot of information about each candidate to take in. And it's important that um, when you tell us the story of who you are, um, as a thinker, as um, a young scholar of international relations, um, that we get the important pieces of that story. Take care when writing your application statements, and if you can, run them by someone with relevant experience if possible. Perhaps a faculty member from your current or former undergraduate institution. In particular, if you can, ask for their thoughts on whether your statement of potential research plans is clear, interesting and well-motivated. Select relevant writing samples that demonstrate your aptitude and motivation for the course. These might be samples of essays or research papers in political science, but they don't have to be, although something at least broadly within social science is helpful. But it's important to provide clear evidence of your ability to engage with academic research, to understand and synthesize complex arguments, and to contribute to academic debates. Your writing can tell us a lot about how you think, whether you're a systematic, a critical thinker, a creative thinker, and that is really what we're trying to establish when we read your application files. If you worry that there are elements of your CV that we may not understand properly, if there may be gaps, if you feel comfortable, use the statement of purpose to tell us about that. The written work is important, and ideally it would be in political theory. However, we realise that not all candidates have political theory work to show us. And for such students, I would just say that the nearer you can get to political theory, the easier it is for us to evaluate that work fairly. So, for example, something from philosophy or something from history is perfectly fine if that's what you have. Even really experienced scholars and writers have to edit and polish a lot. So first, take time. Right? Don't write the application in an afternoon, but come back to it again and again and try to polish it and make it effective. Writing well often means um, writing more clearly, more simply and efficiently. So if you read a sentence and there are words that um, you could 
take away in the sentence would mean the same thing. I'd say take them away, right? Um, you don't have that much space to tell us who you are, so make every word count and get right to the point. Does it matter who provides references? Yes, it does matter. We need academic references. Uh, from people who know you in an academic context. And normally that will be people who've taught you at a previous university, but definitely from people from within academia. Now, most people do do this, but I have seen friends, family members, well-meaning bystanders and passers-by writing reference, references, and there's just no point in doing that. So we need academic references. And please do remember that academics in all universities are busy, busy, not least in writing huge numbers of references. So do give them plenty of time to submit their references. You can control this by talking to your referees ahead of time, by making sure they have the information they need to really, you know, paint a rich picture for us, um, which will complete um, your application. You might want to highlight to them some of the things you think are most important about what you've achieved so far so that they are certain to include that in their in their letter it's there's nothing wrong with sort of sending again in one email some prompts to them about um what you think you would you know what you would like to ask them to 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 be sure to mention um but you don't also don't be too directive because of course it's it's their opinion that, that and their evaluation of you and that must be independent make sure you approach your referees early and give them plenty of time to submit their references so that they don't delay or obstruct your application. Research funding early. Now we know that getting funding for graduate work is difficult and complex. This is something you need to be thinking about at the same time that you're preparing your application, not afterwards. There's loads of information on this on the graduate fees and funding section of the DPIR website. Do look in particular at the information on the doctoral training programmes run by the UK Research Councils. The relevant ones for DPIR are the AHRC and the ESRC, and you need to apply to those at the same time as you submit your application to us. All this information and more is available on the Study Here section of the DPIR website. Thank you for listening and please do consider applying.